Welcome to episode 99 woohoo, of Pink's Picks Book Recs, commentary from a retired high school English teacher. Today's titles, Crying in H Mart and In Order to Live, are memoirs by female millennials born in Korea. Prior to reading Michelle Zahner's simultaneously heartwarming, heartbreaking, often hilarious book, other than knowing that it was a bestseller, I had no idea what it was about or even what an H Mart is. Fortunately, she explains that H Mart is a supermarket that specializes in Asian food. They are usually situated on the outskirts of a city and serve as a secondary center for strip malls of Asian storefronts and restaurants that are always better than the ones found closer to town. H Marts are beautiful, holy places with cafeterias full of people from all over the world who have been displaced in a foreign country, each with a different history. Shoppers are all searching for a piece of home or a piece of themselves. Zahner moved to the States with her parents when she was one. Growing up in America with a Caucasian father and a Korean mother, she relied on her mom for her Korean heritage. So following the untimely death of her mother, Michelle transitioned from her teenaged, complicated desire for whiteness to her fear that the Korean half of her identity died with her mother. Because food was how Zahner's mother expressed her love, Michelle attempts to replicate her mother's dishes. She begins this endeavor hoping to provide nourishment and comfort in her role as caregiver to her cancer-stricken mom. She continues this effort as a means to posthumously connect with her mom through food and to work through her immense grief. Crying in an H mark especially tonally reminds me of heartburn. Nora Ephron's tantalizing 1983 tour de force memoir, which cleverly mixes a main course of marital strife with heaping sides of menus and recipes. Whether it's the death of a loved one in crying or the acrimonious divorce in heartburn, food serves as a salve for healing. Every other summer, Zahner and her mom would travel freely between the United States and Seoul to spend six weeks with family. Meanwhile, in North Korea, Yeonmi Park, author of In Order to Live, did not have that luxury. Hence, her subtitle, A North Korean Girl's Journey to Freedom. In Live, Park recounts her unimaginably difficult childhood in North Korea, her escape to China, then South Korea, eventually settling in New York City, where at the time of publication in 2015, she was a student at Columbia and a human rights activist speaking globally. Growing up, it was normal for Park to go weeks and even months without any electricity and to survive on one meal a day with no running water, thus have to line up for hours for access to the one pump in town. Those conditions pale in comparison to commonplace sites that Park witnessed. Public execution, frozen babies, bodies in trash heaps, and floating in the river. People stealing human feces from outhouses to sell because of the fertilizer shortage. And 
during recess in school being lined up to take turns beating or stabbing dummies dressed up like American soldiers. Horrifically, while in China, Yon Mi's mother is raped several times, and Park is human trafficked. She quickly learned Chinese, so became even more valuable as a translator in addition to her other duties. Park's story is an inspiration it is as inspirational and compelling as it is harrowing. Unfortunately, and I say this with respect for both her and her journey, her writing is flat. And every member in the book club for which I read this work shared the same opinion. It pains me to say that, however, I believe that to be true. English is Park's third language, so she herself is not to blame. I hold responsible her co-writer and editor. So if you're looking for a beautifully written escape story, I would highly recommend Ishmael Bea's A Long Way Gone, Memoirs of a Boy Soldier. For Park's story, I would suggest watching her TED Talk. For content, I give In Order to Live an A. For writing and overall, unfortunately, I have to give it a C. Antithetically, I give the candid, lyrically written, crying an H more marked an A on all counts. Until next time, stay safe, make good choices, and do your homework. Ta-ta, my dears.